Uh, well, first of all, thank you very much for all being here today. This is uh, something that we've been waiting for for a long time, working on for a couple of years now. And so it's with great pleasure that I welcome you here uh, today for an announcement that I believe is extremely long overdue. Before we get to, to the nuts and bolts, let me first of all uh, introduce some of the folks that are up here. Mr. LaPerry is here. Uh, I'm sorry. Pam. Pam is here. Uh, my council colleagues, Melba Curls, Jermaine Reed, Jim Glover. City manager is back there lurking somewhere. <laughs> he never wants to step up and take the credit that he's due. But I want to start off by thanking Jermaine Reed, Melba Curls, and the city manager for their continuous work on this project and their input. Uh, this is something that has been important to this district and the council people serving this district, Jermaine and Melba, for some time. And the city manager has been very diligent in working with all of us uh, in order to get that done. I also see John Wood back there. John, uh, you've been deeply involved in this, and we very much appreciate your efforts as well. So today we get to announce that right where we stand will mark the beginning of the revitalization of this entire corridor. There is a ton of history here. Um, you know, St. Joseph Hospital for generations cared for citizens right here on this site. Uh, this shopping center was built after the hospital was torn down, but it too has uh, suffered uh, the ravages of time over a period of time. Uh, when I was younger and living on 44th and Montgall, 31st and Prospect was uh, one of those major intersections of commerce in the African-American community. Uh, it was an artery in a community of small businesses and entrepreneurs and restaurants and nightclubs, churches and other enterprises. And I've witnessed, and everyone here has witnessed, the decline and the shutdown of businesses as commerce leaves, this neighborhood has suffered and the opportunities have waned and it's all happened right here. This is one of the epicenters of things that have not worked out as well as we had hoped and that's why it's important that we start changing that today. Still the history and the geography of this corner uh, make it a site of, of an integral thread in the fabric of this entire community. And like so many of you and like so many of our conscientious and proud Kansas Cityans, I grew a lot tired, very tired of waiting and watching and hoping that somebody would do something uh, while time and opportunity pass by. Uh, so for those who would not stand by quietly and for those who push for change and for investment in this community and for the detention that it deserves, uh, we heard you and we're reacting to what we heard. So today we're announced the end of the waiting and I'm thrilled to announce that soon we're going to be standing at the site of a, full, of a new full service, high quality grocery store. The focal point. Yeah. The focal point of this redevelopment will be the new Sunfresh market, which will eliminate or at least take a big bite out of a food desert area that's existed here for a long time. And with it will come other retail and food options and jobs and overall investment in this area of the city and for those who live nearby. Uh, this project shows a commitment of a collaborative group to, sh to our neighborhoods east of Troost and, and shows our commitment to economic development of this area. Uh, convenient access to fresh food is a real need and a necessity for people who live here. I'm proud that by working together we can turn the shopping center into a positive neighborhood amenity. Our entire community benefits when any part of it is lifted up and renewed. And I look forward to jobs and neighborhood revitalization that this project will help create. Those jobs include design and construction work, but also jobs working in the store itself, working in the shops that will proliferate here, that have sat empty on this corner for quite some time. And with jobs and quality shopping and a whole new look on these buildings, current residents will have good reason to stay in the neighborhood, but even something else. Current residents will have something to be proud of because this will be theirs. And this will be in an area that has long since been crying out for exactly what we're trying to do here. New residents will be attracted to the neighborhood and to the area and create a job for new housing. This is all part of a larger approach. This is one part of it. We're still looking at uh, uh, 
twelve billion or twelve million dollar facelift and and jobs and uh, construction and economic development in this entire area. This is just one part. So anchored near here are churches and other stores, and that will be successful and be um, uh, affected in a positive way by what we're trying to do here at this site. So economic development here means a whole east side will be lifted up. And I'm grateful to everyone who's worked so hard to make this project possible. So I'm very grateful to Don Maxwell of Limwood Shopping Center Initiative uh, for his efforts on this behalf and for securing this property. I'm also very grateful to John Lapari of Lapari Brothers Sun Fresh Market. And let me tell you why I'm really grateful for that. Because I don't care what anybody says, the reality is that it is easy to develop in areas that are developed. It's easy to put a new store on the plaza or out south or downtown. Those are easy things to do. And because it is not as easy to do these types of things on the east side yet, and because we need pioneers who have the guts and the time and the capital and the experience to step up and work collaboratively with the community and the city to make this happen, Mr. LaPerry at Some, Some Fresh Market is a great partner to have. It's nice to see that somebody in the community is willing to take a little more risk in order to do the right thing, recognizing, of course, that by taking that risk, he's probably going to be just fine. We need to make sure that we encourage our pioneers to come to the east side and develop. When people see what they haven't seen, that is development, then we will have an easier time of getting people to come and develop. That's what happens. You start small, you reward the pioneers, and then those pioneers are the ones who set the stage for coming for other people to come and do the same thing. So Mr. Lepari, thank you for that. Matt Dennis of the R.H. Johnson Company has worked on this project, and we want to thank Carl Yeager of Yeager Architecture, Augie Huber of Huber Construction, and Tom Eatman of Builders by Design. I want to thank Bob Langenkamp, our new EDC director, our new EDC director and his staff at EDC. He's our new president, and I want to say something about Bob because Bob worked on Advanced KC for quite some time, and one of the tenets of Advanced KC is meant to address exactly what we're doing here today. We know how to get things done in places where everybody wants to get it done. What we're doing now is, is that one of the things of Advanced KC is to make sure that we are doing everything we can to incentivize economic development on the east side, to be proactive and look for opportunities on the east side for that development. So Bob, thank you for your work on this project. I want to thank our partner in crime, City Manager Troy Schulte. This is a guy who uh, always finds a way to get those things done that we need to get done. And he's not always understood, but I can tell you that his heart is always in the right place. His heart is always, how do we get it done? What do we do to make things happen? We saw a picture yesterday in one of our in our Casey Stapp meeting of a of a car that apparently was left parked um, uh, during the Big 12 tournament with the keys in it, a wad of money in the front seat, a couple of cell phones, and some other stuff laying there in open visibility. and And, and Troy's response was probably somebody from Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> And I said, now, you know, shame on you for <laughs> criticizing your homeboys like that. I want to thank John Wood and Stuart Bullington for, uh, of Neighborhood and Housing Services because they are the ones who are keepers of the grand plan. They are the ones who are going to help us move not just this project along, but projects in this entire area along. These things are going to happen. I want to thank Senator Kiki Curls. Uh, Senator Curls has been in support of this project. She is not able to be here with us today. She's in Jefferson City trying to figure out whatever they do down in Jefferson City. Uh, you know, maybe hopefully trying to find a way to get around those bad bills that they're passing about poor people. But she is there doing her job, but she was here helping to do this job, and she deserves some credit for that. 
Again, I want to make sure that I recognize my council colleagues, Jermaine Reed and Melba Curls, the two council people for this district for actually um, working on this from day one, being engaged in it, and, and being here to see the fruition of their work. And I also want to thank Councilman Glover, a member of the Planning, Zoning, and Economic Development Committee, because Councilman Glover uh, will be uh, sitting in committee when the package of information coming through on an ordinance needs to be decided. He's been in favor of this from day one as well. So we've got some people who fought for this. I want to thank all of you for being here today because it's important that we highlight the things that we're doing that make a difference on the east side. This is just one of many things that we've done and it's one of many things that we are yet to do. And I know development doesn't happen as quickly as we would always like it, but it's happening and it will continue to happen. It will happen faster as we build collaboration and as people come together to work together on things. The more we work together in harmony, the faster things will move and happen. So I want to continue to work with everybody, the manager does, the council does, to make more things happen. So with the steadfast commitment to keeping it that way and making it better with projects like Linwood Shopping Center, we're going to make this an even greater city. So thank you for that. Now, council. Mr. Lepari, anybody else have anything to say? Let me introduce John Lepari. Good morning. I just, I just want to tell everybody I'm very, very excited for this opportunity. Uh, we're going to bring family values back to this neighborhood like we've always done in our previous businesses. So we're very excited. We want to thank everybody for this opportunity and look forward to seeing you all. Amen. You'll see it. You'll see it. You'll see it. Councilman Jermaine Reed, 3rd District. Well, thank you. It's um, been a long time coming, and it's actually kind of like deja vu being here uh, this morning because many of these announcements that we've had have been with this type of weather, you know, with rain or uh, something to that effect. But we've been able to persevere just as we have with all of the uh, things that have continued to happen right in the heart of the 3rd District. And I want to thank so many people that uh, have been involved. Thank Mayor James for his leadership and working extremely hard to make sure that we get to where we are today, along with my uh, council counterpart, uh, Councilwoman Melba Curls uh, from 3rd District at large, and so many people uh, like Don Maxwell, our city staff, our city manager, and many who have been named already. But we've got a, this is a good day, and it's a step in the right direction. Looking forward to many more days like this to come. Thank you. Thank you, Jermaine. Councilwoman Melba Curls. Thank you. I just wanted to say a few words. Um, I've seen this whole, I was, well, I'm a senior citizen. <laughs> okay. Very senior. One of my children was born in Saint, the old St. Joseph Hospital that used to be on this spot. Some of you remember that. So I've, I've seen this area, lived around this area forever. And to see it come back, I'm so excited. And, and I'd like to acknowledge our clergy who is back here. They've been praying on this, apparently. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, <laughs> good luck to the developers. And I'll be waiting so I can start doing my grocery shopping in this area. Thank you. I do want to point out that regardless of where Melba is, she has some story that ties into being a senior and how it affected her life. And I also want to point out that Jermaine pointed out that every time he's at one of these things, it rains. Now, the common element is, is that he's at them. Okay? <laughs> Councilman Jim Glover. Thank you, Mayor. It may be overcast now, but I, I, I think I can say when we open the doors and when the project is finished, it'll be bright and sunny. That's right. That's At least for me, it will be. I, when this store opened before, this was my grocery store. I lived just a few blocks away um, on Harrison Street next to Troost. And it was a good grocery store. It was a great one to come and shop. And I have every confidence that it will be again. This is a good day to bring back what we worked for so hard in the past and to make it exciting and new. A new place to congregate, a new place to buy groceries. <laughs> you know, and uh, I do want Troy to say something if he will come up here, but right now I want to introduce you to our partner, uh, Don Maxwell, uh, who will 
uh, who managed to acquire this property has worked with us to get it uh, to this stage and will help complete that and then we'll have some serious opportunities, responsibilities and duties after it's done uh, as the operator. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Mayor. I want to thank everybody. That's, I want to thank everybody that's come out today. We really appreciate it. I'm, I'm extremely excited because this is the start and the revitalization of a number of projects that we plan to do along this Prospect Corridor. This is just the first step in the redevelopment of our community. I've been on this corner for a long time. Uh, 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 matter of fact, my first, <clears throat> my first entry to this corner was shining shoes across the street at 13. And looked like I cannot get past 31st and Prospect. Uh, uh, so far, so far, uh, 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 this project uh, was one of the major one of the major steps in the uh, original re revitalization of the community and again it's the first step as we go back and rejuvenate those things that we put in place some 25 years ago and expand on it we're excited the community is excited and I think I, I appreciate all of you coming out and I hope that all of you are as excited about it as we are yeah. and finally City Manager Troy Schulte. Well, again, I can't uh, echo enough, uh, thank everybody enough for their perseverance on this. And I wanna, wanna thank this young lady right here, Mrs. Powell, about six years ago. Uh, she came out and she said, I wanna take you out on a tour and we're gonna go look at all the grocery stores. And we spent about an afternoon just driving around looking at all the grocery stores and I said, all right, I'll figure out a way to get, we'll figure out a way to get a grocery store that everybody in, the, in this part of town can be proud of. So yes. I want to thank you for your patience, your idea, and your perseverance to stick with us. And I want to thank a great team and uh, what I think is exciting for the first of multiple projects that are happening on Prospect Corridor. Troost is no longer the issue in this city. It's how do we keep moving this, how do we keep moving the dividing line in this city, the perceived dividing line, east, east, east until it's 435 and we've got a completely rebuilt city. So we're going to keep at it and I appreciate everybody and we've got a lot of work to do but this young lady here is the reason we're here today. So. <laughs> You know, it would it would be inappropriate to do this without having the Godfather come on up and say something. Come on up here. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All I want to say is that we we tried this some 45 years ago, trying to get things going here in this community, and we worked hard. And Don has been patient with it, and he's come back, and he's put his money, his own money, into this. And we are thanking him for that. And I want to just say to all of our people, please tell our people, let's come up here and let's shop and let's make this what it ought to be. Thank you so much. Okay, we'll take a few questions if there are any. Mayor, uh, and you alluded to this, and maybe John, you can talk about this too. Uh, there was a grocery store here once that had to close. Did, what do we now understand about a way to make a new grocery store work that the old one did? Because that will be obviously be proof. You know, I think that perhaps that might be a question better asked by somebody who knows how to do grocery stores, <laughs> which ain't well, me. <laughs> well, first of all, I think what happened here in the past, I think, uh, I don't know, those gentlemen didn't have any hands on. They weren't there. I'm, I'm just the opposite. I want to meet everybody. I want everybody to know who I am. And uh, they're going to have the best produce. They're going to have the best meat department. Everything that you possibly want. You don't have to go to all these, and you don't have to go, you know, anywhere else. This store is going to be uh, a destination for so, people. So the old one failed, you think, John, because the quality I, wasn't where I believe so. I, I don't know for a fact, yeah. but uh, I do know that those, those gentlemen weren't on on hand and right. they weren't there so that means a lot yeah. that means a lot uh nah not really i mean not you know there's a risk anywhere yeah, I, I clarify what i mean by risk too. <laughs> uh, when i say this is risky it's risky in the minds of people when we talk to them about doing things on the east side they tell me that it's too risky I don't think there's any risk because i can tell you that as a black man i buy groceries and i eat <laughs> and I don't think anybody looking at me would ever be confused about that basic fact. There are people 
in this community who will spend their money here and they will own this. It will be their store. So the risk is only in the minds of people that we're still convincing to come east of Truce. Right, right. That's why I wanted to thank Mr. Lapari because he recognized that it's really not that risky. That's right. That's good. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. Yes. I didn't say it, but that's a good question. And I think what's manager, where are you? Oh, he left. Oh, there he is. Uh, it's a, it, this yes. will be about a $12 million project. We hope to break ground this fall and hope to be up in operation summer of 2016. So that we got an ambitious time frame, but I think with the partners assembled, we can make that happen. All right. Okay. Troy, can you give us some just basic details? Go ahead. Sure. Uh, what it'll be is it's a it's a it's a, essentially a twelve million dollar uh, project. Uh, we will be using Super TIF, which is a act tax increment increment financing tool where we capture all the economic activity that'll take place in this, plus the CID. Plus, we will be using uh, new market tax credits that the city has been setting aside for this effort. So those funding sources will come together to uh, uh, build and renovate the facility, and then the incremental taxes. Uh, generate from the site will repay the, the bonds on the project. So, so, so it'll be public debt. It'll be a public. It'll be a public debt. We will own the structure. We will also be doing a demonstration project. One thing that's exciting, uh, as part of our uh, uh, overflow control program, we will be making this a demonstration project to handle stormwater in the parking lot, and we'll be putting a green roof on the facility so that we have the best uh, sustainability standards uh, as part of this project. What's so the that purchase price for the facility is it now standing? Uh, this this we will the city will purchase this price. Uh, building for the whole shopping center for nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and that includes not just the grocery store, but all of all it. All the retail. And these other people, will they be tenants going forward? Yes. Or will, okay. So, so you're buying buying everything. Buying the whole thing. Right. Yes. And then the eleven million is the construction. Yeah, the right. renovation and the reconstruction of a, co a common facade, and uh, all the necessary improvements make it a first class. Yeah. What's the private money in the well, there, the, the private money comes in the fact that the operators will be operating this thing at risk. So there is no, um, they, they will be taking the full risk of operation. Uh, we don't think they're going to need it, but what we've tried to do is eliminate the capital barriers to the project and allow them to operate at risk without ongoing subsidy from the city. So city will own the asset, be the benevolent landlord, uh, back to Mr. Maxwell, who will operate it on our behalf, and then the Lopari brothers will operate the project. And how much rent will the Sunfresh pay any at all? They will pay, uh, uh, hopefully we've got an agreement about 10 bucks a year to make sure that we get this thing very successful. So you rebuild it, you, and then in essence rent it for free, and right. then you operate your school. Right. This is a model that actually is uh, uh, similar to a very similar model that has been done in Kansas City, Kansas. So. We took the idea and brought it brought it over here to the this Linwood Prospect. On, on mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you anticipate doing this anywhere else? No. We think this is kind of a the focal point of the development, along with our investments along this prospect corridor. We don't envision having to do this, but we think once we get this thing started, it'll start to spin off some of the other issues. So between a, the the Aldi's at 39th and Prospect, uh, which is a super tip project, this project. The proposed grocery store at 27th and Truth will have gone a good way to dealing with the, the food desert issues uh, in the core, and then we'll continue to look uh, to help other projects as they come in, but not to this, not to this extent. Okay, anything else? Can you share uh, the development, your, your vision for development beyond the Sunfresh market? Well, you know what? Rather than me do that, that would be really more appropriate for somebody like John Wood or Stuart Bullington, who are the keeper of the overall area development plan. I can tell you that it will be multifactorial. There will be mixed use. There will be residential. There will be some things with Palestine. This will be something that we are looking at in conjunction with the people that we've worked with uh, uh, in collaboration to simply revitalize this entire corridor. And so I can't get into the details, quite frankly. I don't know all the details of everything that's going in. I know it includes residential, I know it includes more retail, and I know it includes more infrastructure. One last question, yes. Not that I'm aware of. Uh, I think that one of the ideas isn't to force anybody out, it's to force some people in. That's what we want to do. I don't see any reason to do that. However, if it does happen, blame Don Maxwell. <laughs>
Um, yeah, I did throw him under the bus. As a matter of fact, let me back it up. <laughs> I think Dom will be working with people in order to make sure that there is opportunity to have business activity here and to continue business activity. This isn't about moving people out. This is about moving people up. That's it. Thank you all very much for coming.